with Katie and Courtney, but we also call her Cookie. So it's kind of cookie and cake today. Um, so just as we promised, we're going to have a all dessert um, cooking show for you tonight because Courtney is actually an expert. Expert. No, at least we think she's an expert. She makes the most delicious and beautiful cakes ever. She'll send me pictures of them. And I'm always really jealous because my cakes turn out very strange looking and kind of lopsided and with a lot of um, crumbs in the frosting. It's usually not very pretty. It still tastes okay, but it's usually not beautiful. And so what I wanted Courtney to do was to maybe give us some tricks and tips on how to make our cakes gorgeous. And not only gorgeous, but delicious as well. Um, because there's no use in using a box. We might as well just bake a cake. So Justin and I are learning from Courtney tonight. Yeah. But I'll still I've teach you how to make a cake. Mm -hmm. So what we have for you tonight is we're going to be making a chocolate on chocolate cake with a little bit of coffee in it because um, coffee and chocolate go super well together. And then we also have a pumpkin cake with a salted caramel cheesecake frosting with some um, candy pecans. So we're going to start. The recipes are in the description, right? The recipes are in the description and they are online. So we're going to start with a cake chocolate cake, mm -hmm. and this is an Ina Garten recipe. I'm looking at Esther, is everything okay? So YouTube is saying that it's not broadcasting. I'm not 100% so, sure, but Facebook is watching you guys, so okay. keep on going. Sorry, YouTube people. Okay, so to start, we're going to be putting in our dry ingredients. She's yep. refusing to talk. You don't right. mind. She's gonna mind. We're gonna sift together. Oh, never mind, they see it. They okay. see you. Oh, YouTube can see us? YouTube can see you guys too. Okay. We're set. <laughs> you can do it. Sift together, uh, we've got one and three quarter cups of flour. And your spoon. I don't have a spoon. We have a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking powder, mm -hmm. and two teaspoons of baking soda. So just all your dry ingredients. Sift them in there. Why go. is it super important to sift them? Because she's the baker. It takes out the clumps and the lumps. But here's here's the thing. Katie only has kosher salt. Because it's the best kind for cooking. But it doesn't go through your sifter. So you may have some so left just, kosher salt. Just dump it. Let's dump it. Just dump it. See? Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. It is true. But it'll, oh, no, yeah. The only thing left in there is salt. Dump it in there. Steve Butler is watching. Can you believe that? Hey, Steve Butler. Uh, we also have, how much is this? Three quarters of a cup of cocoa. If you guys can get your hands on the Dutch process stuff, that's the best kind. Otherwise, I think we use Hershey's. Hershey's. Why yeah. do you have to sift it? To get out the lumps. That's it? That's mm -hmm. the only reason? It makes a smoother batter. Mm -hmm. So they'll make the batter lighter. It gets the lumps out and makes it finer. No so sugar. In, in this recipe, we consider sugar a dry ingredient. Although sometimes in other baking recipes, you'll put the sugar in with the eggs, the fats. Yes, the with the fat. You do the fat first, then the sugar, then the eggs and vanilla, and then the dry ingredients, but not in this one. They so told you she's dry. better at baking? Not. I have no idea. I just put them in in certain order. And Pinterest and Instagram trains. <laughs> just trains. And tasty? Are you tasty trains? You like those. Yeah. I know I've never done any of theirs. See? We're home chefs. That was... So that's just going to make it really... Just cool. light. Okay. Just light. Okay, but then you... Make your, Oh, we don't have the paddle attachment. <laughs> Where is it? I'm not sure. Maybe oh, you took it with it. the knives. <laughs> you got washed. This one? Yep. It was there washed. Okay. Well, so then, make sure your mixer is together. That's why you need a suit chef. Right. This is why we have a chest. He's so sweet. You're just supposed to sift it all together and mix it all together. And then, you need to mix your dirt. Wet ingredients. We're gonna do a dry. You need to mix your wet ingredients all together, except your coffee. So you keep your coffee out. So what we've got is a couple eggs. So real quick before we're doing this, Emily Griffin asked, "Is is Courtney a family member? Do we not clarify oh, that?" Absolutely. She's my sister. <laughs> I know we clarified no, that. I just show up every year. <laughs> every year for a, well, we do call this the squatting season. Because Courtney shows up. I don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> every like every year she threatens me that she's not leaving my home. 
So okay, I got buttermilk. He says, what are you leaving? And I'm like, the 30th, but I don't tell him what month. <laughs> so she's here for a while. Oil, just canola oil or vegetable oil. I like canola. And then vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla. And then you want to whisk that together and break the egg yolk. Oh, you put the vanilla in. Yeah. So let's get through. Yeah, so Courtney's my sister. You have can, you tell, older. can you tell? Can you tell that they're sisters? Or I mean, because a lot of people say they that they see the resemblance. Yes. A lot of people say that we sound alike too. But so you need to write in. Is it right in? Yeah, they can write in here. Comment. Who you think Ooh, is older? Emily said, first of all, she is beautiful. Oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Just glad that came from a woman and not a guy. <laughs> she is married as well. Uh, simmer down, people. Three kids. We're gonna put this right into the dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. You just mix it until it mixes. Just until just it mixes. Until it mixes. Yeah. Mix it till it mixes. Mix it till it mixes and not any. You don't want to over mix it. And then once you get it to where it all looks homogenous. Ooh. Ooh, you use you big are words. a professional. Then you add in the coffee. No, not <laughs> nearly <laughs> she's older and wiser. I've actually done something. No, for real. <laughs> I make the kids birthday cakes. <laughs> so friends. And so people, some, some people are worried that their cake is going to taste like coffee when they put coffee in it. It enhances the chocolate. It's not true. It's it just not enhances true. the chocolate flavor. Here's the other thing. The first time I made this cake, I got really concerned because the batter was really, really wet and runny. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be horrible. It's not. It's no. It's amazing. Where's the other pan? We're really prepared tonight. Just the other pan. So, what other pan? For the cake. Is it inside of it? Oh, no. I'm just going to scrape down the side and remix it. There you go. We had a lot going on. Here we go. So, I'm just scraping down the sides and then just running this one. Emily time. thought that possibly you were older. Oh, I used to like you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be Poor friends Emily. anymore. She's the only one that guessed. Everyone else was too afraid. You guys think you should guessing. be afraid, friends. <laughs> <laughs> she's only. They, they just know Emily knows that she's gonna see me again. She knows that I she's know, not right? gonna see me <laughs> so again. So the truth she's, is, I'm gonna find Emily. <laughs> I mean, you're only what? 15, 15, months. 15 years older. 15 months. <laughs> yeah, I got months. Katie. Oh, here's your card. I got Katie a happy 29th birthday card, and so my son thought that. We were 11 years apart. <laughs> that was awesome. He's nine. 15 months old. Actually, so it. most of the time, I'm actually, people guess me as older because we've been married longer, our kids are older, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not because you look older. Nobody would ever guess that. Courtney has a trick. Oh. On her hands. Oh. Is it like a magic <laughs> it's trick? It's kind of silly. Okay, let's you know, you try. don't ever want to, well, hey, Wait, you, you know, like, they do, like, here? that, um, they say to butter and flour your pan, this does it for you, and I love this stuff. Um, you still want a parchment it, but, I don't know where I saw this. Don't do it over your floor, because you'll slip and fall. Ooh. I did that. Um, she, see, she knows from experience. So, as long as your dishwasher is dirty, what? like, there's dirty mm -hmm. dishes she, in there. This is what she showed me today. <laughs> I know. That's amazing. What? Wait, what are you doing? You spray it over here, so Stop. like any residual spray. So you just spray a little bit and put your parchment in and it'll hold it. And then you just spray it over your dishwasher, because your dishwasher's already dirty. Genius. And then it'll get any residual. I told you she's so smart, you guys. Genius. Isn't you know, that amazing? You know, I love, yes, that's awesome. It's a little, little hack I do at home, because I slipped on my tile floor and hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> you learn from experience. So we're going to take this batter, and it's just going to go into two 8-inch pans. So this is just a double-layer cake, and we just count it out. Sarah, Sarah Poirier said that is a life-changing hack. Life-changing. Like She's Sarah. literally never going to be the same woman. Emily's out. Sarah's in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Em. I still love you. Okay. Courtney counts this out. I just eyeball it. It's about 12 so pounds per So Steve Butler said, what do you do if you don't own a KitchenAid? By you can buying use, KitchenAid? <laughs> you can use your, I use my There hand. is an easy fix for that. I use my hand. If you have like a hand cheap mixer. handheld mixer, I use that way more than I use my KitchenAid. But my KitchenAid, I have the big mama. The big mama? This is the medium mama? Yeah, I have the big one where the head goes up and down. The bowl goes up and oh, down. Oh, yeah. It yeah, and it's really heavy to get in and out. So okay. You used guys, to bake a lot. I'm just going to put these in a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes um, and do a little toothpick test. 
It is really runny batter, but don't worry. It actually just makes a super moist. Oh, right. Yummy. Yeah, I mean, hey. <laughs> oh, people don't like when you use no, the word moist just, and no. food at the same time. Moist and crusty. Or anything. Or both at the same time. We're not. Okay. okay, we're going to move on from that. So. Um, we have you to... ever topped frosting with chocolate covered coffee beans? Yeah, who said that? Lisa Jerry or something. Oh, Lisa, delicious. I was at the store looking for those today. We were actually looking for those because you can crush them up and put them on the sides. Yeah, of the so that's what I'll do a lot is I crush up whatever I put on top and I layer it up on the sides. And so I do that with chocolate covered espresso beans. Like I make this cake that has a mocha buttercream. And then you just do that up the sides and crush them up and put the whole ones on top. And it's okay. delicious. So. We're going to get started on the buttercream that goes on the um, top. On the top. So I'm just going to get the bat, the um, beater here. So you start. So you want half of, no, two sticks of butter. Double butter. Um, and you want your butter at room temperature. And here's a little hack. If your butter is not at room temperature, you can um, microwave it for seven seconds on one side, and then flip it over and do 10 seconds on the other side, and that'll be yeah, room temperature. full power. Full power. Seven okay. seconds, flip it over, 10 seconds, and that's room temperature better. See, I had wow. no idea. Was it two sticks or one stick? It was two. Are you sure? It's a life, hold on. It was two because we doubled the recipe because for but me, this, but we're gonna make a single recipe for this. I, I um, always make double the recipe of frosting because A, I screw up all the time, and B, just, it's always good to have some extras. Are we on the same page here? I'm looking. I'm looking. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. Yeah, two sticks. Okay. She has a pound. Has a pound. She, she pound. likes. Two. Oh, look at the recipe. I like to just make it up. This is why she's a better baker and I'm a better cook. Uh -huh. I'll take that. You gonna lick it? No, I'm not gonna lick it. Oh. Um, once you get your butter in there, you just oh, yeah. lock it in place and turn it on. The recipe says to beat it for three minutes. I do not like to do that because I feel like it gets the butter too soft. So I just beat it for a little bit. And then you start adding all your stuff. So beat it for a little bit. Did you tell them about the chocolate? No, I didn't. What about the chocolate? We need to melt chocolate. So the recipe calls for six ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. You want to get the bars. I like the Ghirardelli. I'm not sure why it just tastes good. You just melt it in a double boiler and then bring this to room temperature, or you can stay in the fridge for a little bit. Similar to how we did it for the molten chocolate cakes. Yes. Yes. So you want it to do the spatula. Because you're going to overheat it. And then you just add in your powdered sugar. This is two cups. The recipe calls for less than two cups, but I like two cups. I made this for my friend's COVID wedding. It was her COVID wedding cake. So we do two cups it. because it makes it easier to pipe it for that. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, and then, I'm not going to put it in there. Do your egg yolk? I'm going to do my egg yolk. See? It seems this weird, is, but it's an egg yolk. Don't just get over it. Just the yolk. Okay. Just the yolk. Okay. This is... Balsamic vinegar. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is not balsamic vinegar. This it's is instant, instant coffee, coffee mixed with water. Like Nescafe. Yeah. You could then also use your extra and make one of those Delgana, Delgona, whatever. Oh, I always make those, yeah. those Delganos. I have no idea. Look it up, it's so good. Oh, Look the up. little frothy coffee drink. It is really it's good. So good. This is just vanilla. And that powdered sugar is sifted, because again, to get out the lumps. And then you're going <coughs> to scrape in your chocolate. All right, I'm scraping it in. This really is such a good buttercream, and I saw I'm I don't like when I go to a bakery and the frostings are just straight sugar um, without a whole lot of flavor. This is really kind of nice because it's just a nice chocolate flavor, but not too 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 sweet. You can't ask your local bakery if you don't want to make the frosting if they sell it in like quart sizes. Here's a hack. Like Why Riley's Bakery <laughs> sells their chocolate frosting in tubs? I went to pick up her birthday cake and I was like, did you know they sell their frosting in tubs? And that's something like we, I'm from Minneapolis, and we, we're like the home of Target. And Target's, their frosting is amazing. And so for the kiddos, when we decorate. She likes to shop at Target because it's like shopping local, at least for her. Um, for the kids' birthday cakes or when we want to, like if they want to help do it, or the kids and I will do nailed it competitions. And when we... 
um, frost cookies. I just go there and they'll do any color you want. So after you make the bakery, if you're like, I don't want to make the frosting, I don't want to deal with all that. I don't know if it'll be thick enough, thin enough, whatever. But this was so easy. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's too thick, you just add a little cream or a little milk. And if it's too thin, you just keep adding powdered sugar until you get it to where you want it to be. Then you can pop it in the fridge mm -hmm. if you need it to, to um, harden up as well. Yeah. So that is how you make the chocolate cake. But now we need to get into a little bit of the decorating. So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way because like any good cooking show, we already have some cakes made. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. This has a Um... Yeah, so we're just going to grab some cakes that we've already made, and Justin and I are going to try to to make a cake look like Courtney's cake. Wait, I'm we have to make like I'm doing that. Yeah, so <laughs> we have to make the drip. Okay. Well, we got to do the drip after we're putting this in the freezer. Oh. All right. So I'm, this I'm is not that same cake that with that we just put mm -hmm. in. There. So this is the same cake. It's a nice dark chocolate yummy cake and Courtney help us what do we do first when um, decorating a two-tier cake I like to put a little frosting on your if you use a kitty head board so she put them on boards um I did it's easier to transport it and you usually want to get a board this is not a knock on her this is just what she had a board that's the same size as your cake it just looks a little better unless you plan on frosting around the bottom edge then you just want it about an inch do you know what I use these boards for Exercise those exercise slides. That's smart. I know. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, and that's just your own personal aesthetic, like as far as ports. So that's just my preference. Sarah actually asked, "How did it bake so perfectly?" Mine always rises in the center, and then she said, "This actual recipe. How is oh, it?" Oh, yeah. do you? Okay. There's a few things you can do. Like these, these two sunk a little in the center, but they should be good. Um, don't open your open and shut your door because that changes the temperature and that'll sometimes make it sink. Um, and then are you tapping out the air bubbles? So I always take the pan. Oh, we didn't do it. We, I well, we didn't tap them out though. Yeah. We didn't set a good example. And you just hold it above the counter a little bit and let go and just tap it about three times on the counter. So you, you just, just like little, drop it drop on it. the counter. Yep. Boom, boom, just boom. lightly. And that helps she was so a bit aggressive. Maybe that's what it felt. <laughs> <laughs> that's so it doesn't it like. It well, the other thing you yeah, can do is up. if it domes, you we'll, can always. We'll show you on this this pumpkin yeah, cake. That's a tip and trick that we'll show you later on. Yeah. Stay okay. tuned. Okay. Ah. So then you just want to like throw some frosting in the middle. Just throw it on there. Throw it on there. Okay. Yeah, big lump. Well, how now, Justin, you, you and I are going to have to do this. However much you want in the okay. center of your cake. Well, that tastes good, right? All right. Mmm, that's so smooth. That's good. Yeah, it's like I understand why you sift it. Wait, what? you didn't sift any of that, did you? No, we did. We did. Oh. We sift the, yeah. Oh. Powdered sugar. This is a really big one. You don't need as big a one, but you can use a little one. And then you just spread it. That's why you want some underneath. All right, so Justin's going to have to do this. See, when mm -hmm. I spread things, mine all gets crumb, crummy and, well, well, we're putting on the crumb coat. So once you get... This is called the crumb coat? No, this isn't right oh. here. But this is just your middle layer. So once you get that in, and you can pipe it on, you can do whatever. But once you get that on, and you want to make sure when you put your cake on the pan that you put the... And this, with the dome issue, put the rounded side down. So you have this flat side that you're dealing, dealing with. And then your next cake you take, Whoa. you put the domed side down. Now if it's really heavily domed, then we will deal with that later we will cut it off but then you just kind of like it's like manhandling that thing you got it like, you no know, fear now Courtney my cakes sometimes in that process have completely <laughs> fallen apart I've seen it then happen. you just glue it together with frosting no one else well so people definitely know when I have glued something <laughs> together with frosting mm -hmm. um another little thing too is that I really like their Wilton brand um that's oh, weird you grab one of the six Brian Sayer just said are you going to be using Wilton tips yeah, I don't know the number. Ryan but... Sayer probably Googled that. <laughs> you um, know he did. What? What about those six one? inch ones that I just Oh, yeah, had? yeah, we'll get them. Um, all right. You can also, back to the doming issue, I prefer, because you can see these weren't straight sided pans. So you can see how it kind of it goes out. I didn't have yeah. the nice kind of pans. It tapers. It, it tapers. So now you're going to have to build that up and hide it all with frosting. That's not a bad It's not bad. Because um, you don't like frosting, we don't like you. 
Um, <laughs> but these, Wilton has these, you can about Michael's, and they're straight-sided. And these work a lot better. This will help um, whoever asked about doming. Let me know if you use a straight-sided one or not. You can also wet a towel or a paper towel and wrap it around your cake pan, and that'll help with the doming. They also sell things. Yeah, she knows so much information about doming. We need to move on, though, from the doming, just for the sake of time. So, Close. take that. So you just, Flip you went like it. this. Yep, and then slowly peel it off. And then pop it on top. Not like this, but nope. like, don't side down. She manhandles hers. I Mine had fallen apart before. And then you just kind of get it as even as you can. All right, got to finish this crumb topping thing. So a crumb coat is just a thin layer of, you can even take this off. It's just a thin layer of frosting on there that you put on just to hold in all the crumbs. So you can see like little bits of crumbs mm -hmm. that just come off. And if you just start to frost your cake, it's going to come off in your frosting. And you don't want yes. that to happen because That's it's what not happens pretty. It's like when you're painting a wall, you should always prime before you paint. Right, and sand down those spots. That's right. So you can just take, you don't even have to put a tip on. You can just put, whatever this is called, a piping bag. This with, with the white thing on it. Yep, and you can just just throw Ooh, some frosting on just it. Just like that. Yep. Um, <laughs> looks like the poop emoji. I got this turntable for Katie today, but it, it's not my favorite. Don't buy it. And then, like, if you had a turntable, you just turn, turn it, it, and you just literally. Just, what if it doesn't stick? Like yours is all. Well, it right will. Now. Okay. You just. I mean, you can even just like. Put it on like just this. Just like crazy. Just like messy like that. Yeah. And I can do this. It doesn't yeah. matter. I, I, can, I can do I'll this. Do oh. Oh. Okay. I'll do it. Now and then. The poop first, right? Yeah. Put yeah. It on the top. From the center. Just a little bit. That's oh, good. Oh, that's too much. Mm -hmm. Well, where's my bowl? And then, can you turn it, Katie? Oh. I need you to help me here. All right, but I have got, I'm like your I'm suit. I'm really good at this. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. I you can use, really this is usually how my cake ends up in the end. That's probably good. You can always add more. Oh, okay. Well, there's um, not enough, so. I mean, you need to put more in there. You can awesome. use one of these. I like, I have like a flat edge little what thing. It has different designs on it. But you literally just smooth out a super thin coating of frosting on your cake. And you may have to like grab some and add it on there again. Um, are you watching what she's doing, or are you just well, playing I don't have, frosting? I'm playing. Just yeah. you need you need to watch what she's doing. Not well, just I don't playing. have her. Tool. You can use it. Just kind of there. Um, what do you do with all the stuff around the edges? Well, that's I don't you. That's why you want you your cake it. board about the same. That when you you just same width. Um, otherwise, and I totally forgot this. We saved them. I usually shove um, wax paper underneath the edge. Oh, oh that's then, a good hack. Yes. Sarah, that's another life-changing hack mm -hmm. right there. You can just shove wax paper underneath the edge of that, Change and then life. that'll... Otherwise, when I put it on my cake stand, I just go back through with a washcloth, a rag. A clean I, one. A clean. I never knew that this was a thing, like yeah. priming your cake like this. Yep. So you just want it super thin. Justin, you do that with mud on our walls. I know. It's it's you're going to be good at this. Same. But I want to same no, thing. I that thing. So see, it's just like a thin little layer. You go around the edges and around the top. Yep. It doesn't have to be pretty. Because okay. you're going to make it pretty right. later. She's going to give me that. Hold on. She's really, she's going to town here. Uh -huh. just, yeah. And there's your crumb coat. And then you put it in the freezer. Right. She's going to put that You can put it in the freezer or you can put it in the fridge. Oh gosh. Good we heavens. Use that if we need it. I probably put too much on the top. Yeah, then you can just wipe it off from here. Does it matter if there's too much on the top? No, I mean, you want it. You just need to remember how much you put on there. I just do it really thin. What if... <laughs> what if mine on the... This has oh, well, naked really spots? Right that's okay. You just want to make sure yeah, it has, okay. like... Don't worry about it. Yeah, like, if it She does, says that's okay, Justin. You just go back through. You can go back through and touch it up if you want to touch oh, it up. Oh, good lord, yeah, you have a lot on the top. I did. I was zealous. Okay, <laughs> I was excited. Justin the zealot. Okay. But yeah, you just want to make sure that if, when you go back through to do the pretty stuff, that your crumbs are all sealed in there. What about in between the two layers? Do you worry about that Do you crack? worry about the crumbs? Um, you can even crack. it up. Yeah. 
if okay. you want to do that now, otherwise you'll do it later. Just make sure you've got, like like I said, that those crumbs are yeah. sealed in there. Well, so can, far, this is more level than any other yeah. cake I've ever made. You can do this. Then you can put it in your fridge or you can put it in your freezer. Again, I live in Minnesota. It's too cold to snow there, so I put it on my deck in the wintertime. We use our screen porch, too. And you mm -hmm. put it in the freezer so that it oh, seals you, in So the then crumbs. it just freezes. Yeah. All right, Cookie. Let's put these in the no, I think this is fine. So this is going to go in here? Oh, look at you. You already got it cleaned up. So, wow. Okay. That's just the crumb coat. So this needs to sit in the fridge for how long? Until you want to get it out. 20 right. minutes? No, I don't, maybe 10 minutes. Have, have you ever done it like a day in advance? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. You, I've done so it where I literally like, keep it frozen. No, then I put it in my fridge. Oh, okay. So, but it's like you put it in the freezer if you want it done. Okay. You want to access it quick, and you put it in the... Okay. Are we all done with all this? I think we're going to save this, but yeah, take that. Yeah, save that. Because we can add this to that bag. So we're going to show you, well not we, <laughs> she, is going to show you how to make a um, chocolate drip on the oh. edge of your cake. And so what I've got here is just a bag of semi-sweet chips. I am microwaving just a little bit of heavy cream and you want to get it so that it's kind of bubbling around the not edges boiling. but not all the way boiling you just pour it over your chocolate chips let it sit for a second stir it up and that will be a ganache if it's too thick you can thin it out with more cream if it's too thin thin it out or thicken it up with a few more chocolate chips um so i'm going to grab that out and then we're going to get started on the pumpkin cake so courtney do you want to um show them how to even out the top of that dome oh yeah so i have this contraption at home that i forgot i literally <laughs> had her bring all of her cake stuff from minneapolis to i here. forgot a bunch yes. of stuff can um, i just tell you really everybody is talking about whoopie pies and how much they love whoopie pies do you want to talk about that at all <laughs> There's everybody. Like, everybody's like, yeah, I love whoopie pies, whoopie pie, whoopie pie. We're not even making whoopie pies. He loves whoopie pies. Can she does. Talk about that for a second, I do. Look, this is how you take the dome off. Just line it up. <laughs> line it up and just run your knife. I have this one contraption. You can get it. It looks like a hanger upside down, and it'll have little measurements on the side. So, like, this is, a th like, maybe three inches, two inches. You just measure it. And then you can set your little wire, and then you just set it on your cutting board and literally, literally just go back and forth and you'll get layers that are the same. Otherwise, if you don't have that, you just take it off. Um, I love whoopie pies. <laughs> there was one year when she was pregnant with Carson, she had a daily whoopie pie. I was in really good shape though. We were going to CrossFit a yeah. lot. We would run to CrossFit, do CrossFit, yeah. run home from CrossFit. Yeah. So she's just cutting. We have six inch layers here, so we made two six inch cakes. Yep. And I'm this is going to be a pumpkin salted caramel cake, but mm -hmm. this is considered a naked cake. So for all of you out there that are like me that can't decorate a cake to save their life, this one's easy because you don't have to do anything mm -hmm. fancy, but it still looks pretty impressive because you end up getting a tall, narrow yep. stack with some yumminess. And mm -hmm. I feel like this cake in particular is kind of like pumpkin bread that believed in miracles it's like it's the most delicious thing so yep. so you've got your four layers and you've got your little bowl of frosting just it's a this. salted caramel cream cheese frosting so you just kind of want to like divide it eyeball it and take a quarter of it and then mm. pop it on there oh ava sayer says hi miss katie i miss you hi <laughs> she's watching she's literally logged on herself I love, I love it i'm a very messy cook if this wasn't on camera, I would lick those fingers. You should. <laughs> this is a family show. Yeah. Um, but you just put it on there and then just... What kind is that? Caramel? Salted, salted caramel? Salted caramel cream cheese frosting. That's so mm -hmm. good. You know where we got the caramel, guys? That caramel that I taught you how to make? Oh, dang. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Are you seeing it? I'll try it? a little bit. Yep. So then you just frost one layer. Mm. Grab another one. Pop it on. This is really good frosting. And this, it's supposed to look rustic. So, I like rustic because wow. then mm -hmm. it can look like a mess and you don't Yeah, it's really good frosting. So, it's supposed to look rustic, so you don't need to worry about Make it being pretty. super pretty in between the layers because you're just literally spreading out frosting. So, you don't do it on the sides or you just nope. leave it like that? It's naked. 
It's naked. I know. I'm like a cake. So it's just a scandalous pop, show. Pop the next one on. Wow. And is it okay if it starts oozing like that? It, yeah. Does that add to the charm? It adds to the rusticness. See? It makes you want to sit friends. around a fire in a flannel. You drop some. I'll take care of that. Okay. That was free. Mm. Yeah, that really is more of a fall flavor, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Oh, you can, you can make it in the pumpkin. summer. Really good. You can eat pumpkin anytime. Actually, in the fall, pretend, I get pumpkined out. Pretend that these layers are even. I feel like Katie and I cut them in there. Justin always said my head wasn't screwed on straight when we tried to hang pictures on the wall. It's always like a little... My dad and I always say with cakes or with anything I make, we're like, it's not perfect, it's homemade. There, there. let yourself off the hook, friends. Yeah. So then once you get to the top, you just take the rest of your frosting. You pop it on there. And... Spread it. What's the name of this cake? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. That's a good question. Pumpkin <laughs> cake. If you Pinterest it, it's pumpkin cake with salted caramel. Yeah. Okay. Frosting. So your top doesn't even have to look perfect because once you're done with that, you take your caramel. And it's you can get messy with this one. So you take your caramel and you literally just like start drizzling it. And it looks really good when it gets on the board too. So it gets a little, little character. And then um, we candied some, if you really like caramel, you can do it in between. We candied some pecans earlier, and so I just left them how they come out. It's two to one ratio, so you do like a cup of pecans to a half, a, or a cup of sugar to, nope, I should have written this out. A cup of pecans to a half a cup of sugar, you put them in a pan and you just stir them around, and as it melts, you'll start getting that candy coating on your nuts. And I did pecan halves and little pecan pieces, and so you can crumble them up. Like, and then after you're done, you drop them onto a wax paper. And I left them, like, how it came out. But then you would take it, and you can so see you how like, it comes up. Put it up like that. You can do whatever you want. So if you These wanted good it on a look, salad with blue cheese. Well, that's the recipe that I use. Oh, you put them in sideways like that. Well, you can. So you can put them on and or make you them. Pile them. You can make them look like this. And just do a bunch looking like that. Mm -hmm. You can crumble them. Here comes my kids. <laughs> <laughs> he said, like, yum. And yep. So then you can, like, crumble them up. It's really humid, so these are really sticky. That's but okay. you could just crumble them up and then just throw them on. Mm. I would just and probably pile them. And you can just pile them. <laughs> I'm just going to start putting them in the pieces on there. Mm -hmm. That tastes really good. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. And there's your cake. And it's a naked cake. And it's Can easy. you put some along the bottom? Or you can you do put, whatever like, you want. You can take here. <laughs> You can take some, you can press them into the side, and then put a little. Doesn't that look delicious, you Things guys? Things look better in threes. So if you are doing something below, like little clumps of three versus two. So yeah. Cute. That, one. that one's done. Done. Should I put it in the Easy. fridge or anything? Uh, yeah, well, if you want it, it'll set it, up a little bit. It. But then also, if you want more caramel mm -hmm. after. That's the same caramel that we taught you to make mm -hmm. episode one, right? Yeah, and if you want more caramel, you just keep drizzling it. And there you're done. Isn't that an amazing cake, you guys? So mm -hmm. yummy. But yeah, put it in the fridge because then that frosting will sit up. I will. I'll take care of this. So as she was doing that, you guys, I was just finishing this ganache, and I'm just funneling it into my little ketchup bottles. Um, so that way we can drizzle it on our cake. Yeah. So... I got one bottle filled. So basically that hot, um, heavy cream melts your chocolate. It really is delicious and so easy. You just have chocolate chips and heavy cream. It's not really anything too strenuous to make. Um, and that's it. And that makes a good chocolate sauce over ice cream for fitterolls. <laughs> We almost made you all profiteroles tonight, which we might have to make later this, uh, maybe in the next episode. It's basically a, like a shoe pastry, which is what you apply like a cream puff or an eclair, and you don't fill it with cream, you fill it with ice cream, and then you make a chocolate sauce to go with it. And I like to put a little bit of amaretto in this. People are asking, are we having a party or something? Because that's a lot of cake that we're making. No, yeah, you guys, <laughs> it's literally just us. <laughs> Maybe. I think if Emily Griffin literally knew where we lived, she would be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, it's just us. This is <laughs> this is why we typically put on a few pounds in the summer. We have like one, two, three. Yeah. We have eight people here. We do have several. Mm -hmm. Just four cakes. <laughs> four cakes. It's like we are going to have a cake a person. We're going to save one cake for little Lauren's birthday because mm -hmm. she was wanting the chocolate chocolate. How old are you turning? Eight, ten, twelve. How old are you going to be? Five. Six. Six. Yeah. You better have the little finger. Her dad thinks she's going to be seven. Yeah, he did. And he bought her a happy seventh birthday card. <laughs> and then I caught him sitting in a chair with his arms crossed. Just right here. He goes, you're going to be seven, right? And she goes, no. He's like, are you sure? <laughs> you sure? Yes. Okay. So we've got our two bottles of ganache, Courtney. Mm -hmm. And are the cakes ready to come out of the freezer, do you think? Um, just touch them. See if it leaves a fingerprint. So this is a test. This is this is new to me. I none, just touch them. None of this is scientifically proven. This is just what I have. Ava Sayer says it does look really yummy, though, like super duper duper <laughs> yummy. Which oh, Ava Sayer. She's looking for an invite. Okay. <laughs> so I touched them. They seemed like cold cake to me. So that so means I think they're done. I'm pull them out of that the freezer. That means they're done. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I'll, I'll get them. Yeah. Am I making you nervous? You get, you get Courtney's, I'll get ours. Alright. Here they are. They are. I'm going to take this out of the way. Beautiful. We have a couple little extra things that we can use for decorating, too. Um, this has to sit. Did you tell me it needs to sit for 10 minutes? No. It needs to sit for 10 to 15 minutes because it needs to come to room temperature. Otherwise, it'll melt. It will explode. Your, uh, Friends, have you guys noticed that when Courtney and I get together, ni neither one of us have a brain between the two? <laughs> no. Um, what happens? No. And this may still, I mean, we haven't timed it, so it may still melt our frosting and you'll get to see what happens. You guys, this is going to be awesome. Um, so, I'm probably getting this out of me. We just got little things that'll... Thing you can do to your cake. Katie said that we would do like a half and half frost. You done with this? So like just show you guys different options and ways to frosting. These little cookies, A, are delicious. Mm. But B, mm. um, make really pretty decoration around the outside of your cake. So um, you'll do it after your frost. But you'll want to take some and just kind of, do you have a serrated knife? I'm just eating a pond right now. Um, you'll just take them and cut them at different lengths. So you want to leave some it's measure dirty. your cake. No. Okay. So you just want to cut maybe some in half, some oh, with a little shorter ones. I'm like scared to cut these things. This will be fine. Yeah, so you get the idea. So now we need to actually frost. So, this is the part that makes me nervous. So someone called Rocky Top, which I'm guessing is one of your aunts, or maybe Go uncles, Rocky said that if you don't have 10 minutes, maybe you could put them in ice water. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Right? Good idea, Rocky Top. Which um, one is Rocky Top? I Tell them to identify themselves. Identify yourself, Rocky Top. Is it lateral or vice? Probably lateral. Yeah. So again, you can just take your... Look at what she's doing, y'all. You can just grab a bag, Katie. This one. Oh. Um, or you can you can pipe it on like that. You can take your spatula and just run it on. Really, it's not. And if you don't like what you've done, you just scrape it all off and start over again. That was going to be my question because sometimes oh. I feel like I've completely ruined it and I need to bake a new cake. Yeah. Nope. You just scrape it all off. I think that crumb layer or whatever helps mm -hmm. a ton so that you can scrape stuff off and yeah. you don't ruin everything. So you just scrape it off if you don't like it. I really don't know what oh, I'm Oh, Rocky doing. Top is Papa. Oh, oh that's your dad. That's our dad. <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> Hi, Papa. I um, love that Dad knows how to make a cake. Yep. And then again, you just smooth it out with whatever. Courtney, I'm just zigzagging. See, this wasn't ready. There's some crumbs coming up, but we'll take care of that. Don't touch it. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. But if you have crumbs come up, we'll, we'll take care of that. Spread them to the edge. Oh, so we're flattening this bad boy out. Yes. So now you're wanting to get this nice and smooth on the sides and the top. And again, you just see your spots. Like, where is there a hole? Like, right here. And then you just grab some more frosting or your frosting, your piping bag, and you just fill it in. 
And then you just keep smoothing and smoothing. This really needs a little. You guys, another little trick I do when I put my cake on a cake stand, I actually have it on a turntable at home. Um, you know, like those, the rug, you put it under a rug. What's it called? Like it keeps oh, it from slipping. Like a rug pad or something. Yeah. yeah. Take a piece of that, cut a little square and put it between your cake base. Like whatever, yeah. if you have it on. Yeah, because my thing's sliding all over the place. Yeah. What is this? A cardboard. Yeah. No brain. Um, put one of those little rug slip things underneath that and it won't, then it won't slip we'll like this. That. Yep. So, because we're having to hold it. Life hack. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Ain't nobody got time to hold their cake in place, Courtney. No, ain't no. nobody got time for that. Nope. So, yeah, you just keep going around and looking and seeing where you have holes. And just put as much frosting as you want. I and noticed you Esther's this. zooming in on yours. <laughs> uh, it does look a little bit more straight. I'm not going to lie. And again, it's just trial and error. I am doing... I mean, I'm giving my best well, effort. She, here, think, Katie. She does history. have a tool. Mm -hmm. She has that plastic tool. You guys, this thing is seriously, it's like my favorite thing. One of my favorite things. I feel like. This thing? Yeah. And you can make different, like, uh, designs. You can make different it. designs with it, too. Yeah. It's easier if you have, like, an actual turntable, because then you just put the design side in. Like a record table. Yeah. Like a turntable. You do the, like, wiki, wiki, wiki. Yep. Gotcha. And you just <laughs> scrape it. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Um, yeah. No one in this kitchen is professionally trained in anything. Except Justin. I am professionally mm -hmm. trained. Yeah. More classically trained, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So yeah, you just keep smoothing it out. And if you need more frosting, just grab your piping bag. And you have a piping bag, you pipe hold from the top and squeeze. You don't squeeze. What do you do at the edge where, like, do you make... Oh, you just the... make it as smooth as possible. And if you get little... Do hickeys sticking out there, then and you, you just cover it up, yeah. so you don't try to pick them out. No, you don't ever pick them out. No, because I would do that. No. I would be like, oh, I'm just gonna get that out, no. and then because then you have a snack along yeah. the way, right? But that's not what you do. You no, just add and more. again, if you this is not a knock. I'm just saying, if you have that straight sided pan, you'll have straight sided cakes. Well, I'm taking offense at that. I know. What so. are we not good enough? No, your pan's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you get to the top, you can just, like, grab it and pull. You start from the outside and move in. Yeah. And, it, again, you can look and see, like, okay, where are my holes? And you so can mine pull. looks a little bit more homemade. Mine looks homemade, too. We're not done with it. But see, like, down here, you're going to want to add a little more frosting. Give me that. Well, hold on. So, like, see, I've got a spot right here. So just add a little here on this side. And so you just, again, trial and error until you're like, huh, I like how that looks. I don't like how mine looks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Justin, you want to... It's not like you need my help, Katie. I know. Okay. I'm going to pipe like she told me. Just fill in those spots. I really should have put down my thing because the base of this looks ridiculous. I'm just putting extra frosting on it. That's fine. And then once you get like all your stuff covered, then you just kind of try to this way you make it out extra frosting as flat as you can get it. But again, this had a little piece come up, so we'll have to try to get that. I don't to know finish. what I'm doing. Well, if it messes up, then you can just laugh at me, right? You'd be like, oh, "I'm silly, guys." <laughs> you really can't be in too much of a hurry. Yeah, well, we're not in a hurry. <laughs> no, we're, we're just all filming night, a live gentlemen. show, Courtney. We're here all night long. No, it's one of those things. Like you do it after the kids go to bed, put on some music. Oh. At least this is what I do when the kids are at school. It's like therapy. This does play. not feel like therapy. I'm so stressed out right now. You're making something for your friends or your family or yourself. If it's one of those days. If it's one of those Courtney, days. Courtney likes to make a little cake every Wednesday. People will drop their kids off at the church functions and then go over to her house for dessert. It's kind of fun. Just the moms. So. Oh, just the moms. Mm -hmm. Dad's wow. Mom. Courtney, look at you. It's going to to mine. Okay, so she's pulling it in towards the center. She is. She just pulled the All right, so in. why don't you start showing them some of the outside okay. design and give me that funky tool. Okay, just pretend yeah. like that's perfectly smooth on the it top. It looks beautiful. It's good. We'll just pretend. We're pretending because I need a smoother outer. Here, it's well, all over your hands. All right. I'm going to do what she did. Oh, this tool is kind of helpful. Yeah. yeah, they have all different size ones. I just have a little one here, but that's because we're doing a shorter cake. But if you have a bigger cake, you can use taller ones. Um, has it been 10 minutes on this drip yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has? It's yeah. still really warm. Just kidding. 
We're going to put it in the fridge for a little. Oh, our cake cleaning. Oops. Okay, so these little pirouettes, Papa likes these. He was talking about that. Papa's our dad. So you can just take them and put them along the side of your cake and just make it look real cute like that. And you can do this and make a tiramisu layer cake that's really yummy. I have made that before. Yeah. Um, and I do these around the edge and then chocolate curls on the top. So your chocolate curls, if you took that ganache and instead of putting it in a bottle, you would just put it on a sheet pan and run it real thin and stick it in the fridge for about seven-ish minutes. And then you take a little metal spatula and just run it up and you'll get chocolate curls. And if they don't curl and it starts breaking apart, it needs to be a little warmer, so you just leave it out. And if it is a hot mess and starts melting, then you put it back in the fridge. So you can see you could do this just all the way around, and there's no rhyme or reason. It's just what do you think looks good? Frosting's everywhere. And you just do it like that. Oh, so you can do something like that. Good, Katie. I'm trying to Emily Griffin know. said, good job, Katie. I am trying really hard. It's, it's probably like the it. most successful I've ever been with a cake, friends, because... This you is have the right me. tools, too. Watch this out. is, yeah, this is not my mm -hmm. area of expertise. All right, can I leave it like this, Courtney? Do you think that's good enough? you want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't like that it's got this little... Well, that's why you that's go why you flat. That's why you put it on the inside. Wait, here. Oh, look at that. You've got a bowl. And then just... Oh. I feel like this is like the Bob Ross painting <laughs> shows where he does something fantastic and then I just try to mimic what he does. Yep. Except I don't think our voices are quite as like soothing and heavenly. Steve and Butler said, don't round the edge. Don't round the Sorry, edge. Steve. Um, Steve you Butler knows how to do this. Stuff <laughs> and add sprinkles. Katie said just to do randomness around the edge. You can just pipe around the edge, add some sprinkles. You can throw some sprinkles. You can't do it left-handed. <laughs> Courtney had a friend who was who was saying that she purposefully like so you for two hours. What doing. No, can, it was. Can you show here, me what you're doing? Oh, so that, I'll come this way. I can't yeah, do it left-handed. She literally just chucks. So you it can on just there. you can pipe stuff around the edge and start chucking sprinkles. I no, it was this blogger. I read her cake and she's like, it takes about an hour to put each sprinkle on with a tweezer. And I was like, hmm. So I just grabbed sprinkles and I just so this. when you and they stuck. <laughs> So, that's, um, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that's something to do. If you've got your, and then you just brush off the excess when you're done. Um, this is not what a full cake, this is like a schizophrenic cake. Because <laughs> you're decorating it all different ways. Gotcha. Um, oh, it's like so, three cakes and all the different I'm just yeah. covering up all the mess on my board with frosting. Oh, I need that tip too. Oh. So, see, look at mm -hmm. that first. And I'm going to, and then if you want to... Just throw some on there. It's not like emerald. Like, it's not like... Pow! <laughs> um, you threw. Okay. Yeah, but... And then Katie was talking about how to do, like, the little pipes on top. It's for all about the she, fractions, friends. Like the she always runs out of... That was terrible. Oh. Um, but you get, get the idea of <laughs> chucking up things. You want to start and go across from each other. So, like, let's say you put one here. Then you go directly across and do another one. What are those? Just little rosettes. Little rosettes. Oh. You just go straight across from each other. So then you would come in and you can usually fit two in between. So you could even just do your two. I always get them uneven. Yep. But if you do those first four right across from each other. And Courtney said that she'll sometimes do like chocolate dipped strawberries and put mm -hmm. them around on top of these. Yep. Look at that. Or those espresso yep. little things. But if you together. don't have them, then that's where you can take sprinkles and just do a few Ooh, little sprinkles. Yes. And look how flat and stuff the top of her cake. Is. And you could just line the inside with sprinkles if you wanted to do that. So maybe yes, ignore this side of the cake. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can leave it flat side and just do those on top. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, and if you have. Let's get the drip going on mine. Okay. And then we'll do that. Various. She things. said that her, this is too. Okay, we'll try this. These are done. Yeah. Right. Test them. Test it. Um. So the drip. We'll just test. I want to sure do it too. Okay. So you just start on the edge. And if you want to get my, I don't know why. Hold on. No, you're so close. Um. You just start on the edge, and then you just kind of run the edge. Shoot. 
and you just send, you don't want those, there's a clean side right here. Okay, so you start on the edge. Seriously, our cakes are schizophrenic. <laughs> and you just kind of run it along the edge and get some drips coming down. What if you, it ends up pooling at the base of your cake? That's okay. Look at how pretty. Like how I I've that. tried that. I've tried that before, you guys, and it's looked like I've tried to use a knife yeah. to bring it down because it looks. And like if you're like, I want this to be a little longer, you just hold your drip there a little longer. Oh, looky, looky! And then it goes down because you want them to be different, but you just go around the edge and you just let it fall. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, let me try. Let okay. me try. I'm gonna do so this. Like, what do you do on the top top? You then take the rest of it and dump it on top. Oh, okay, and then it just turns into like a glass top. Mm -hmm. I've never been successful with this, Courtney, until now. That looks great, Katie. Yeah. And so then, show, show we'll keep turning. They want to see. You would do this before you threw sprinkles on the side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... Oh, that one came out fast. Oh, yeah, you just messed with that one. Okay. I feel like maybe there's something clogging this. I know. These may not be the best ones. Jen and Leach said, leftovers to 551 Alfred Street, please. Great. Which is the church address, by the way. Oh, oh I, I said Justin should bring Church staff. Oh, wait, you did the rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it doesn't take long to do I'm the I'm going to fill in the top of mine. You may want to unscrew it or be gentle. Oh. <laughs> so can you do this? Yep. But again, it might be just, yep. As long as yours doesn't clock. All right, gosh, this would, I, I hope no one that owns a bakery or actually knows what they're doing is watching this. And then you just. Look, I'm just turning it for you. See, sisters, sisters. There you go. And then that just Now can out. I pipe some stuff on top? Yep, and you can do different shapes. You can do it at different angles. Um, can you do roses? Mm -hmm. Can you do well, a rose? No, not on no, this no, one. No, no, no. Well, I was going to do something different. Oh, she was going to do something. I was trying so to do like an angle instead of doing the same. So like you can take different piping tips. Oh, gosh. Do... She's getting fancy. <laughs> no. But you can do, oh, the little rose thing is you start, I was telling Justin, that usually we all start when we frost cupcakes, we start from the middle and go all the way up. And so these, watch, it won't work this time. But if you start in the middle and work out and you get... It's the chocolate ganache you're going to want a little. I have two. I'm just going to put a little thing yep. right there. So. <laughs> what are you doing? I just want to participate. <laughs> the thing is, if you have different, like, if you have different size tips. Let's put a little thing right there. You can do, like. Put a little thing there, too. Yeah, you can it's do like a different. like a bouquet. Things. Are you going to do it just on half? Is that yeah, like, it doesn't one? always have to be around the top. Well, let me have that. that. Oh, I think I Brian Sarah there. said it looks like a Peruvian pan flute. Oh, <laughs> but a delicious Thank you one. so much, Ryan. So if you have different, this one is terrible, different size piping tips, you can do different things. Oh, it needs a little thing right there. And then if you have, like here's a little dot. Happy little dot. Do you see how much she shakes, y'all? Dot. How she, no. Dot. Oh, okay. So you... That's so cool. Like you just, just are literally making like a forest of chocolate. Yeah. Ideally, you want the drip to be oh, solid. <laughs> Katie's just, just want to participate. Just happy little trees. Yeah. And so happy it doesn't always have to be like right around the top or whatever. It can be like at an angle. And then if you have, you don't have any oh. different color. <laughs> <laughs> you like the Ignore chocolate the on sprinkle chocolate. side. Let's do like this way. Um, so you have like different color sprinkles. You could add different sprinkle colors on there. You could like take gold. these, like gold. Or gold white. sprinkles are good. You can add sprinkles up there. You don't have to add sprinkles. Friends, you, this one looks schizophrenic on the back. So are we well, done? Well, I think that we need to, we well, going we're going to finish having some fun here. Well, I don't know. I feel, like, I feel like it's leaning. No, no, no. It's not leaning. It's the leaning. It's it's the leaning. Next to each other? It's really yeah. Cool. yeah. Move everything out of the way. <laughs> it's really quite this is awesome. Warm in this kitchen, so everything okay. is okay. Everything is melting. Look, we've got three kids here that really want a piece of cake at this point. Mm -hmm. So, I think this is where we sign <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you should have signed off 15 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah.
I'm not sure how long squatting season is going to last, but maybe we can get Courtney that to come back. really good. I know, I did a nice job on that, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> get a tight shot of that right there. Oh, that looks pretty. All right, friends. All right, are we good? We're good. Have um, a good night. Thanks have a good coming. night. Thanks, Thanks for so watching, much. guys. We'll see you next time. Kicking with Katie. Bye. <laughs> Morty.